Well, I'm Michael C. Rupert, a.k.a. Mike, or Mikey, uh, if you're really my, my bud. And I'm uh, the subject, feature, star, whatever you want to call it, of a, a really great documentary movie called Collapse, produced by, uh, directed by Chris Smith of Blue Mark Films. Uh, that's about the collapse of human industrial civilization, which is uh, the, the, uh, the place where I've arrived after 30 years of work as an investigative journalist to understand that that's what's going on and to try to find out the causes and maybe some ways to help soften that. So the, what the takeaway of the movie is, is that the Titanic, representing industrial civilization, has been hit by an iceberg and it's going to sink. It, it can't be prevented. There's incredibly good evidence for that. And the reason why I got asked to make the film is because I predicted the economic crash of 2008 and a great many other things over a period of a decade as, a, as an investigative journalist and author. And I spent 30 years living, if you will, on one side of my brain. That was all Cartesian. It was all logic, facts. And there was, there's always been a very strong musical, artistic side of me that was essentially locked away, the, the, the man in the iron mask for 30 years. But the truth is, and what I've learned through my journey and through many years of spiritual study, is that one needs to be integrated, one needs to be balanced, one cannot live in all one place all the time, and, and true power comes only with the integration. So I, I guess on like a hundred different levels, one of the things that I had to do for myself after this body of work was done with my book Confronting Collapse and, and, and with the movie Collapse was to get back to music. Was It, it, it was a need as strong as a salmon swimming upstream uh, to uh, spawn. And because uh, I, I had been a singer before and I'd been around music and that's what I wanted to do, but I put it aside. And so for me, the making of music now is a way for me to carry the same message in many other ways that are accessible to more people and that enrich the understanding of what we're, we're all facing and hopefully empower us to face it. But music itself for me is joy, and it's, it's uh, tremendously different from the way I used to live, where I had to document everything and, and I engage in endless debates about what I meant by And The beauty of a song is that it brings you right into the now. And when you hear a song, you either like it or you don't. And, and it's a way of staying in the now. And uh, when I'm making music, I think any mu musician will agree that when you're in a tune, when, when you're playing a song, the only place you're at is on the beat in this moment in the now place in the next note and that's a that's a fun way to live I graduated from Venice High School which is right back over here uh, less than two blocks uh, 40 years ago and uh, uh, this is this is as much home as I've ever known and it's truly where I where I feel at home in, in Venice Culver City where, where I live close to the beach and with a lot of friends and uh, when I moved back here in February of 08 hopefully never to leave. I got connected to the Venice Arts Club. Really, my dog introduced me. Uh, my dog Rags became great friends with a dog Squishy at a dog park and through Squishy I met Doug Lewis who is one of the founders of the Venice Arts Club, my old home turf. Doug Lewis has been fabulous. He's also an incredible musician, composer, arranger, performer, writer who uh, uh, because of our love for music, spent some time with me and, uh, and, and really helped me to get to places I never thought I'd be. But Venice Arts Club is like the picture of Eclectica. One of my friends, Michael Yost, a world-class guitarist who's also in Venice Arts Club, said, uh, he's quite right, he said, uh, Venice is the place where you can always go if you don't fit any place else, and you fit here. And you know, there's good and bad, dark and light, but there is just a feel to Venice that to me is home. In context of the band, the new white trash, I don't think any one of us, that would be Andy Kravitz, Doug Lewis, or me, thought or planned to have this kind of incredible arrangement where you have a one-of-a-kind genius like Andy Kravitz with you know two Grammys and a bazillion Grammy noms as an engineer and performer and, and uh, writer and Doug with his incredible dedication to creating music 
and his skill at the board here and uh, recording and mixing and then me not so, not so much as as a journalist I, I I've been called a radical thinker I love that label but someone who was who was considered to be an, an intellectual with the written word if you will it just turned out to produce some amazing stuff the, it, it's 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 a collaborative process that just amazes me well what is the new white trash Doug and Andy came up with the name I think a couple, three months before I was asked to join the band. And uh, new white trash has nothing to do with old white trash. Not, not, in, uh, not in terms of its values, belief systems, or anything else. You're new white trash if you had a home two years ago, and you don't now. You're new white trash if you're living in a double wide trailer. You're new white trash if your 401k is MIA, if you've lost your medical insurance, if you're watching everything that you thought was security evaporate around you and maybe have found yourself now homeless or you know in uh, worse conditions. Uh, that's a rapidly growing demographic that nobody's writing music for but the middle the, the old middle class is the new white trash. If you're lucky enough to have a job you're you're afraid of losing it and you're watching everything shrink as taxes have to go up governments cannot continue to make all this debt or it's going to bring everything down and that's not going to solve everything the financial collapse is going to get worse but the first people that are going to be eaten uh, it's like a food chain the homeless already are being digested if you will and then it moves up the ladder but these people know that they're on the food chain because they can see their pensions disappearing their benefits being slashed having to work more hours their their dollars not going anywhere nearly as far business is off uh, so you know there's a full born new white trash and there's ones that are still in the womb but we'll meet them soon and I think it's a great concept because it reflects the reality of events in what we call the post paradigm we've we've called our music post paradigm music what's the paradigm again it's the human industrial infinite growth paradigm so that's a big thing in human history well, we have seen time and time again how wall street and the u.s government lies about numbers back in i think in it was in 2000 i don't know one two somewhere around there not too long ago the, the the congress recalculated how it calculates unemployment and had they used the uh the uh, method they were using before that unemployment would now be at about 19 or 20 percent it's all bookkeeping uh there are uh much more than anecdotal stories but i can tell you that detroit's own press is saying they got a 50 percent unemployment rate in detroit and unemployment, does, of course, does not count the people who have dropped off the books, whose, whose benefits ran out a year ago. They just don't exist anymore if you're using the 10% number. So the new white trash is a serious, large body of people. And I think what the mainstream media does, everybody knows I do not like mainstream media. I don't trust them because they're corporate children uh, and they serve corporations. Well, won't, won't tell you the truth. And I think one of the things that scares them is us, us new white trash finding out how many of us there really are. New white trash isn't white, no. As a matter of fact, my really good friend, uh, former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney of Georgia, who is definitely a black woman and proud of it. She's a wonderful, dear friend. She's a member of new white trash. And uh, no, you do, do not have to be white. We have many different kinds of songs. Some are very I ironic and, and they're parodies and they're really kind of, at, you know, to all the bullshit that's going on that is ruining so many lives. Some are, and those are the ones I like, and I, 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 I've helped to write a few of those, are, are, are comforting or, or inspiring that, that give people strength to deal with hard times and, and acknowledges their pain. One of the things that we think of a lot, uh, an inspirational model, was Woody Guthrie, who began writing songs in the Great Depression for all the people that Hollywood and the radio and entertainment didn't see. Those are the, you know, the, then the tens of millions of unemployed and homeless. Uh, nobody was writing music for it. And along comes Woody Guthrie, and I, you, you can probably trace that through to Dylan and a lot of other people and straight down to us. So New White Trash wants to comfort, wants to, edit, want, wants to educate, wants to uh, acknowledge the truth of what's going on there. Uh, we thrive on hypocrisy. It, it gives us great material to write songs with. And we also want to make culture. We also want to produce culture.
because uh, what I said in the movie, I, th I think I'm, I'm getting to live part of now, which is that everything in human experience now is on the table. Every fu a paradigm is what you think about something before you think about it. It's all the things that you accept. We're post that now because all the things that people accept aren't really real anymore. So I said God is on the table. The, the, the most core beliefs that we have. Political beliefs, communism, socialism, cat, throw them away, they're irrelevant. They're all based on inf uh, an assumption of infinite resources. So it requires new ways of thinking. That provides new white trash with an opportunity to produce culture to fill that vacuum, to produce new culture that expresses the reality of the new paradigm. Personally, I, I, I like to stay in touch with what's going on out there. In other words, I like to meet and see what's happening with the new white trash in real life. That's where some of my inspiration comes from for the lyrics that I write. And Squishy and I and Rags go to this dog park every day. It's a wonderful place. Um, and it's grassy and it's open and it's a large semi-industrial area. So, But there's been like this outbreaking of motorhomes parked around it. They're all people who have lost their homes and are now living in motorhomes and they have dogs. And so they're taking care of their dogs and living in a motorhome next to the dog park. I mean, that's beautiful. Uh, some of them are very, very poor. Some of, their, some of them have had their unemployment benefits run out. So I met this one uh, really nice lady named Meredith, maybe she'll see this someday, who has, has, has a great dog named Red who made friends with rags. And, you know, I heard her story and, I, and, and she had a job two years, and now she's living in this motorhome with her dog and she's going hungry, but that dog is happy and healthy. That says something. But there's a backlash because this is happening all over the country and you don't see stories about this uh, uh, on 60 Minutes or wherever where these motorhomes are turning up in residential neighborhoods and people are starting to victimize the people living in the motorhomes because they scare them. Get out of my neighborhood. We don't want you here. It's like you're messing with my postcard. The fear that that evokes in people is it kind of lets people know who are still pretending to live the life that they're next. That, you know, coming soon to a neighborhood near you, motorhomes and trailers and homelessness. And so there's some very interesting and I think bittersweet and even tender things that come out of those experiences. And so we're using that as inspiration. But the dog park is like a metaphor for what's happening all around. I want to see those people. New White Trash wants to see those people in the motorhomes and to talk to them and to listen to them. We're not all about a glum message. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, one, of the, one of the beauties of art is that it can bring joy into our lives. And joy is a much needed thing. Humans need it for balance. And uh, we also need hope. New White Trash has a song called Avalanche and Earthquake that, that I collaborated on, co-wrote, and, and I sing. And it's all about living a joyous moment when it, when it presents it, itself to you. The opening lines of the song are living on the windowsill between horizon and events. We're in this moment. Big, big bad stuff coming, you know, who knows what's, but let's play today. Let's have some fun and finding joy in that. And that's a really important thing. That's what I do here that I, that I wasn't doing. We have, we're also rediscovering as, as, as we in this little tribe, this, this band of merry, artistic, wonderful people sit by this fire and talk that, that our priorities are changing and the things that give us pleasure or that we think are giving us pleasure are changing and we're finding ways to have a lot of fun and some really special times doing things that are totally not dependent on the old paradigm. So sometimes maybe, uh, maybe Thoreau was right, simplify, simplify, simplify. New White Trash has this, uh, this great thing that we're trying to put together. Uh, as a result of the movie Collapse, a wonderful family in Ireland, the Plunkets, who have lived in Castle Dunsany for almost a thousand years outside of Dublin, contacted me and offered me a place to live. I mean, just because they'd seen the movie. And correspondence ensued with the Plunkets and Randall Plunkett, the son of Lord and Lady Dunsany, Dunsany, excuse me. And uh, uh, just this wonderful friendship developed and, and, and we clicked. And it's a wonderful castle and it's a wonderful place and we've been kind of offered that. 
and we're discussing the best ways to use it. And what, what, we've, what we're coming up with is uh, an idea, concept, where new white trash would go stay in Castle Dunsany for six weeks, two months, who knows. And while there, number one, we, I wanted, especially for myself, to study Irish songs of survival and strength and hope and, and encouragement. Because if anybody knows about survival, it's the Irish. And, and, and to learn from that so as to influence our music. We also wanted to share this commonality of interest because Ireland, I think all of Ireland is new white trash right now. And, and to have an event, to have like a, uh, a post-paradigm renaissance, if you will, of creative and artistic thinking and sharing and free expression. Technology is great. We would be able to webcast from there over Skype with uh, high quality on the music and video and to have events like maybe a dinner once a week where someone would come and visit us like perhaps Colin Campbell, the world's foremost expert on uh, uh, peak oil who is known throughout the world. He, he lives in uh, Baldyhoom, Ireland. And uh, you know, perhaps George Galloway, some musical giants, perhaps Taj Mahal, maybe The Edge, who knows, uh, to come and sit with us and talk with us and make music with us and podcast it around the world with no interference from any old paradigm thinking, free from all that stuff that imprisons the way people think before they think about something. It's not fair to say that we're all optimistic. We're very realistic about what's going on. We're, we're very squared away that bad things are coming. And a lot of the music that I have collaborated on or where I have contributed words is focused on giving people strength to prepare them for what's coming. It's about dealing with life from a new mental attitude. New White Trash truly is, 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 is all about not only staying in the now, it's, it's about extracting every possible moment of joy that can be extracted from the now once your mind is free to do it. I got a birthday tomorrow. And uh, uh, and I know already it's it's already the best birthday I've ever had in my whole life. And and what's good about this moment, as sad as circumstances are, that that there is a joy that comes from being able to find a way to laugh and love in the now, even while you're screaming and and hurt, or whatever the case may be, and frustrated. You know, uh, it's a it's a life skill. That's what new white trash is. It's a new set of living skills. One of the ben great benefits of the collapse of the old human industrial paradigm is that we were all brainwashed into believing that in order to have something called happiness, we had to have or do or own whatever X number of things and experiences, uh, all of which are uh, gratifyingly proving to be unnecessary at all to have joy and happiness and to express. And the great benefit of that right now is with events being uncertain, you realize the, 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 the precious nature of this moment, of being safe and happy this moment, this day, of waking up with, uh, uh, if you're lucky enough, a bed, clean clothes, a shower, food, friends, a telephone, some clothes to put on your back.